What's poppin'? It's your boy Moses, aka Normal, chilling right here in the Let Out It podcast with a very special guest, Mr. What up, man? It's Marvin Saint Pantaleon from uh, One World Peace, the fashion designer behind, you know, the the movement. That you see, that's right. Yeah. That's right. We got uh, one of the greatest uh, up and coming designers from the city of Southgate, dog. That's right, man. You know what it is, bro. Hell yeah, I know I exactly know what it is. It's crazy because if, if you watch the podcast, I always start off by saying, like, welcome to Southgate, probably the first and last time you're ever going to be here. It's kind of like a pass through city, but in this special occasion, we finally have somebody that's, you know, a living legend from Southgate. So, right. welcome to nah, the podcast. Appreciate dog. it, bro. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for being here, dog. It, is. it means yeah. a lot to me and shit. So, um, let's talk about the beginning for you. Um, you know, like growing up in Southgate, how you got into fashion and stuff like that. Right, man. Yeah, bro. So, you know, I grew up in the city of Southgate. Um, well, originally I'm from South Central. You know, my family was raised in South Central. But my mom and grandparents are Mexican, you know, so I come from that culture. And, uh, you know, during the mid-90s, they decided to move into Southgate, which I thought was a good decision, man, you know, because... <laughs> Compared to where you come yeah, from. Yeah, sometimes I think about it like, fuck. Imagine growing up in South Central, bro, you know? In my yeah. teen years, I probably would not be here today. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, you know, Southgate isn't the best, but it isn't bad either. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like it's a city in the middle, you know? It's definitely, like, worse. Because my family's from East LA and shit. Right, right. So my dad moved over here, moved us over here when I was three. Okay. You know, and luckily, I have a lot of family in East LA that didn't get involved in, like, gangs and stuff like that. Yeah. They kind of stayed out the way. But, you know... Uh, knowing me the way I I'm, yeah. I'm into like rap music and certain no like, anti culture, right? yeah, and I'm into anti culture, dog. I love it. You know, you tell me not to wear baggy jeans, I'm gonna buy no bigger doubt. ones. Especially imagine 2000, yeah. early 2000s. Yeah, we probably would have chose a different <laughs> path, bro. <laughs> Facts, dog. Straight up, man. You know, so me too. I'm I'm kind of blessed, even though I got into some bullshit. You know, I've been right. in jail and all this shit in okay. Southgate. Still, so if you find if you look for trouble, you'll find it, dog. Oh yeah, it's anywhere, really, bro. You know, really, really, really is. Yeah. But I think you're right. I think uh, luckily I grew up in Southgate. You know, I still love the city. Um, oh yeah. Have you noticed uh, any huge? I've noticed some changes in the city. Uh, you know, we got Walmart now. We got oh yeah, In-N-N-N-N-N. dude. Right, right. <laughs> what was this at? Right. When <laughs> yeah, we were youngsters, man. We started to drive to Downey or go to downtown for anything. You know. Right. Go to Downey for In and Out. You know what I mean. Go to the mall in Downey. Yeah. You know. What is uh? What are some of the biggest changes you've noticed that you like or you don't like about Southgate recently? Right. I mean, I, I like the progression, bro, to be real with you, you know, because um, growing up, we didn't really have a lot of the, that stuff, you know, and right. I always felt like it was kind of boring sometimes. Mm-hmm. But being in the, having the park, bro, that was probably one of the best things the city, you know, had. Yeah. I think you're right. I think uh, a lot of people know about it, but don't talk about it, that people from all or all the cities around here come to our park right. to walk around it, to play sports, to do yeah. whatever, you know, like it's a big ass park. Yeah, nah, I'm thankful for the park, bro, because uh, if it wasn't for the park, I probably wouldn't be focused. You know, I played a lot of sports, okay. like football and basketball. That's what's up. Every time, man, meet new friends and, like, I just learned how to be competitive, you know, and, like. Also being a team. Yeah, no team doubt. Player. And then, like, winning games, you know, you, you, you motivated to get better, bro, you know. So yeah. I would say that kind of helped me, too, you know, to keep my mind focused, you know. Yeah, even though right now there's a huge beef between the Southgate JA and, and uh, uh, Alex Enamorado. Oh, for real? There's a big beef about street vendors and stuff like that. And they're, uh, they're attacking uh, one of the council members who's part of the Southgate JAA, right? And there's a bunch of beef going on. Man, and I they're, think they're I know both about. <laughs> they're both right and they're both wrong, but whatever. That's, that's, sure. We're not here to talk about politics, politics. But I also, too, love uh, Southgate Park and playing sports. I grew up playing baseball since I was four. Uh, again, kept me out of trouble with, like, when my homies wanted to go outside and kick it, be like, hey, I got baseball practice or I got right, a baseball right. game. I can't make it. Yeah, that was a good thing about Southgate. You yeah, know? you know, and then I got good. Then I'd be able to, on, on the weekends, I couldn't kick it because I have travel ball, you know, or like right. AAU and basketball, what it's called, right? right? So sports are very important. Yeah, especially as a kid, you know, like you said, you know, you don't have time for, for the bullshit, you know, yeah. so. Because I know fools that are still locked up right now that would never play sports and like they just had too much time on their hands. Right. And you know, and you're a kid, you're curious, you want to go try to do something, something crazy, steal some shit or whatever. Nah, for real, bro. You never know what you get into. And that's the other side of Southgate, bro. You know, yeah. growing up, going out as a teenager, you know, with your friends, trying to go to these flyer parties around the city, you know. Yeah. You're a little bit younger than me. Were, uh, yeah. were you still going to flyer parties in high school and stuff? Yeah, bro. There's actually, I remember the time we had a party cruise. I don't know if you remember the party we cruise had a with party the badges. Crew. With the badges, I had, I had my own party crew, dog. Oh, where, what was it? I had the most dumbest name, dog. What was it? The Stud Muffins. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> hey, actually, that's pretty tight, bro. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that was my my MySpace name, dog. And then the homies one time were clowning me like, "Oh, Stud Muffin Forty Four, because I was a baseball player. Yeah, and that's a baseball term. Like, oh, stud. A, yeah, he's a stud. a stud. Yeah, I know what it is. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so sports. one yeah. day those was like, "Hey, come over. We, we we got something to show you." And they're like, 
the some fools like I'm gonna be the muffin man and I'm gonna be the this man this and they were just making fun of me and they're like yeah. and we posted on MySpace because back then there was right, MySpace right, yeah. I don't and, think they know huh? yeah, yeah I don't even think they know what that is and shit but like they people were like were laughing they thought it was funny I'm like fuck it you know let's roll with it right and we, we got we got deep but it's a big drama over all that shit but nah, anyways you know how that was bro it ended up being like gang bangers and that <laughs> yeah. shit like it it's crazy. a slippery slope dog right, you start right. one day you're a party crew the next day you're tag banging then you're in a gang and then you're right. in jail you're like how the fuck did I get right. here from a party right. dog nah for real bro. I was just trying to get bitches nah facts that's <laughs> what we were trying to do bro motherfuckers with nos tanks and shit yeah like, throwing parties and shit yeah dog. but that, to me i feel like that's south gate too bro you know like the other side of south gate like that's the underground culture yeah like the underground culture the backyard parties you know what i mean like i used to like break out of my house to go party bro oh, my shit. mom would say no but you know you they fall doing. asleep i'm like man i'm gonna hit the back door and go party meet up with my friends yeah. Drink a Four Loco, you know. <laughs> Shout out to Four Loco. Ah, bro, my first drink was a Four Loco. Oh, dude. serio. Yeah, let's man. talk. Let's talk about this. Is a, a new segment right here. Four Loco stories. Tell me your Four Loco story, dog. All right, bro. Shoot, man. You know, partying in Southgate. Fifteen years old. You know. Yeah. Walking Allegedly around. fifteen, maybe eighteen, maybe twenty-one. Actually, I was twenty-one. <laughs> I was 21. No, <laughs> you know, yeah, I was just a young dude, man. Right, right. You know, with my boy. You know, we went walking around the city. On our phone looking for parties, you know, they used to mm-hmm. post flyer parties. So we found one and uh, some girl hit me up. So I'm like, bro, like, what, what, what should we do? You know, like, let's get fucked up, you know, like, yeah. what should we get? There's like a few options, like, try this for local. Tried it, bro. Man, probably had the best night of my life. Man. <laughs> Ended up making out with the girl and everything, yeah, bro. Yeah, you know, yeah. It gave me courage, bro. Built some type of strength in you, yeah, dog. Yeah, Four Loco got you that dove. You exactly. Know? Got that man. vibe. Got, got got the little Mac down and the number, bro. I was 15, <laughs> dog. That's a W right there. Yeah, that's dog. a dub, man. Sleep like a baby that night. Right, shit. <laughs> a little hickey, maybe. No, I'm playing. Uh, no, I'm saying burn her out. Um, yeah, but you also, we talked a little bit off the, off uh, before the pod started. Uh, I went to Southgate. You went to Southeast, but you're also part of that. Uh, when they built the new high, the new high school and middle school, which is together, right, the same same uh, building, not building, but same spot. Um, how was it like switching from Southgate Middle to Southeast Middle? Right, um, man, it was it was crazy because uh, you know most of your friends went to Southgate High School, you know, and uh, Southeast Middle Southeast High School was kind of new for me because uh, all my friends were from Southgate, and uh, I don't know if you remember Teen Town. Yeah. Yeah, bro. So in Teen Town in middle school, we had got into some beef with the uh, Southeast Middle School. And I'm from Southgate. And I ended up fighting some guys from Southeast that happened to be from a certain crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And bam, when I found out and I heard I was going to Southeast, I'm like, shoot, man. Yeah, you already know that. I'm going to have to watch my bag, bro, yeah, yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. That's how it is. Yeah. And all my homies went to Southgate. So I'm like, man, I felt alone, bro. So, you know, I, ha- I had to like, you know, suck it up, bro, and just meet new friends. But it was cool, bro. You adapted yeah. and stuff? Yeah, I adapted, you know, because like anywhere, you know what I mean? It's still Southgate, bro, you know? I didn't go to Southeast High or Middle, but, you know, in Southgate, I go to school with people who live in Southgate. In Southeast, are you going to school with people from like Watts and South Central, like um, that side of town? Some, yeah, th- there'll be some people uh, from Watts, you know, from, yeah, pretty much from Watts. Yeah, a good right amount there. of people from Watts. So the other side of Southgate, yeah. you know, by, uh, what's the name, Truba? Okay. I never knew that street existed to like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of streets that are like, uh, like um, what are they, Nebraska, Indiana, right. True, but like the small little streets that on that the side. That's cut, man. Yeah, yeah you never. Let me decide. We never really walked that way, you know, because yeah. all this fun stuff is on Tweety, you know what I mean? By the park. Yeah. Park life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and then now they got a now they got a, a raising canes right there in front of. Oh, them. I heard. Yeah, that's crazy, yeah, dog. man. We we, live, we got a Starbucks now, dog. We up there, dog. <sighs> man, all we had was uh. The donut shop, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> the old ass donuts in yeah, California. Exactly. Um, how do you feel about like you know? Um, let's talk a little bit about like uh, the new culture of how it is to be Mexican. Because I don't know if you noticed, but back then it wasn't really cool to be like Mexican, right? Right. And it wasn't <clears throat> really cool to be American or Mexican American. Are you Chicano? Are you this? Like we were kind of having some of us. Some people think. Some people say that they weren't. But some. Let's be honest, dog. As far as having your own culture, it was you're kind of stuck in the middle. You can't be too much of one thing. But now, like. I feel like being Mexican American or as far as Latino in LA or, or being from LA, like it's accepted. There's more of us. It, it feels more like a community. But back right. then it wasn't really like that, right? Right, right. Man, I would like to think social media has a lot to do with that, bro. You know, um being being able to like explore more of your culture and know more of the truth, you know, because I feel like we weren't taught that as as kids growing up, you know. Yeah. We're taught more about the American history. 
you know, and uh, I think it, it built some type of confusion, bro, you know, growing up, like, we didn't really know who we were, you know? Yeah, because I feel like in school, they always teach us about, like, American history, which is white people, or, like, For you sure. know, like, the con- black, black black history, or, sure. or Spain, all that, like, Christopher Columbus and shit like that. Right. And they come to find out, like, when you get up and you actually study it yourself, like, all that shit was, like, a, like a lie, a big-ass yeah, lie. Yeah, man. It's fake as fuck. It, it kind of messes with you, but then you realize, bro, if you really think about it, man, we, like, like the beginning of our generation, like we're the first of that. Like we're the first Chicanos in a way. Like we're the ones, the first ones to be proud on social media. You know, right, right. That too, and like imagine our grandparents came from Mexico. My mom came from Mexico, so I'm we're first generation. Yeah, yeah, me in too. In this, in this new world, you know what I mean? Like, and they want to raise us in the old world fashion for sure, which doesn't correlate. Like a lot of times, I feel like me and my dad didn't really have the best relationship because. He was trying to teach me things or how to be a man in an old in an old world. Right, right. And sometimes I'm like, nah, you can't do that over here. Like, you don't understand. Like, right. I need my 501s and my Jordans, dog. You're like, yeah, no, yeah, what the hell? Like, where are you shoes? Shirt in, nah. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. my dad's the type of guy to wear the same shoes for 10 years, Sheesh, dog, and be yeah. straight. Yeah. Like, instead of hand me downs, like me getting hand me downs from him, he gets my hand me downs and shit. Right, right. He's just that type of cat because he comes from like the dirt nah, no in Mexico. Doubt. Yeah, no is, doubt. And it's not like that over here. It's not, bro. And I think that's what messes with our culture. People like from the same you know our identity our identity bro like in a way we don't know who we are but like you said you know we start researching about ourselves more and you know you just gotta love yourself bro you know what i mean like yeah like yeah i'm proud to be latino you know what i mean and back in the day i felt like you like you said you know we weren't able to really be proud of our culture but now nowadays i feel like we we should be proud of our culture, you know. Also, too, like uh, like I have an internal war in my head. Like I'm American, but I think I'm Mexican. Then I go to Mexico and like, oh, fool, you're not exactly. Mexican, fool. Like you're yeah. from America, you're from the other side. And then I come over here, like you're not American, fool. Right. You're Mexican, right? And I had to learn, like honestly, recently that I love being American. I love being both because sometimes sure. I would have cousins. I don't know if you have cousins that like love like buy some music and yeah. they're like dressed like cowboys dog right, right. they don't even live on a ranch but they want to make fun of me because i love rap music and right. i wear my hat backwards right or whatever. Nah, no doubt. like i'm yeah. hip-hop exactly. but to me hip-hop is like american culture because yeah. um, that's where it's from but, like do you ever have that issue with family that saying like oh why are you acting like that right now nah, i know what you're trying to say <laughs> no nah, no doubt bro yeah be like that because you know hip-hop inspired me bro at the end of the day i feel like hip-hop gave me a light for my struggle hip-hop gave me hope yeah. You know, and that's a, being American, brother. You know, like that wasn't a Mexican inspired, you know, by my household, you know, right. like our parents, you know, like they want us to be like how they grew up. But right. that can't really be, bro, you know, because imagine we grow up by side in middle school, bro. They're going to. It ain't it. You know what I mean? That yeah. don't get the girls, bro. You know <laughs> that, too, because I also have homies that um they were ESL, English second language. So that just means that. They were they didn't they couldn't read fast in English. Yeah. And those homies, like right now, not to talk shit, but a lot of them have like, you know, they they're not progressing really far in life because they weren't able to catch up or learn at the same pace as people who like only spoke English. Right, right. You know, which is kind of like it's not really their fault. It's not even their own fault, you know, like yeah, it just man. it is what it is. Yeah, though. it's the system, bro, you know, at the end of the day. But like I said, back to the root, bro, just uh love yourself, you know, be proud of who you are. At the end of the day, you know what I mean? Facts. Let's talk about the early beginnings for you. Like, when did you first fall in love with fashion? What was, like, your first pair? What really, like... Because I remember my first pair of Jordans were Team Jordans. Okay. And I was happy as fuck to right, have them. Because right. back then, I didn't know the difference, dog. I went from Team Jordans to fake Jordans to finally understanding what the difference is. Word. The first 12, you're like, the ones he actually wore. The little card, you start you yeah, know, studying you know, the card. You know, like, I didn't yeah. know what the fuck was going on, but I just was just so intrigued. And, like, you know, I wanted to learn about it. But yeah. how did it start for you? <laughs> for me, bro, it was a... Uh, the East Bay magazines, remember Ooh, those? Yeah. Ooh, hell yeah. That's really what uh, sparked my interest in fashion. I remember my uncle used to get the, the subscriptions every month, and me and my yeah. cousin looked forward to that, like, ooh, let's see what they got. I want that one. Pick your top five, bro. And we'd go through the whole magazine. <laughs> window shopping. Yeah, window <laughs> shopping back in shit. the day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, one day I'm going to get this, a John, the Sean John outfit, you yeah. know, with these Jordans, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, that's really where I found my interest, bro, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think for me too, also like uh, watching MTV, BET and different things like right. that, watching music videos and in the music video, like, oh, the guy dressed like this gets all the for bitches. Sure, for so sure. I'm like, I want to look cool too. And like, it's one of those things where like, 
there's guys out there that are fully confident in themselves and it doesn't matter what they're wearing, how they look like. Yeah. All bumming used to get bitches. But sometimes, you know, like when you got that fresh, fresh haircut or right, fresh lineup right. and you got that full that fit, like you just feel different, you know? Nah, no doubt, man. You know, when you throw on that one world piece. Nah, <laughs> but, nah but yeah, you know, like uh clothing makes you feel good, you know, just bring some type of uh confidence in you, you know yeah. what I mean? And uh that's really where I found my first love in fashion, bro, was the them East Bay magazines, bro. No. Yeah, I'll, I'll never forget that shit. I have the picture in my mind right now. Though. Right, just scrolling going through, through it. it. Yeah. How thick the paper, the sound it For makes sure. and shit. And then the back, they had all the sales, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, that's where you that's where you ordered from. For sure. Shit For that's sure. from like two years ago, the right. number 60% off. Hell yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, especially young, like my dad, like, well, we're humble, right? Luckily, we have our own, own spot that, sure. that you saw right now, but... Like, we just had, oh, my understanding was we only have enough to survive. We never have extra for night shit. Right, right. So, like, it was always hard to kind of, like, convince him to give me some shit. But my mom was always, like, sneaking me, sneaking me some J's right. or buying me a shirt from Foot Locker or I'd something like, like that. that. Yeah, you know, like, like that. Uh, how, where are your parents from? Uh, Well, my dad, uh, he's Guatemalan and okay. my mom's uh, Mexican. Oh, shit. You know, but uh, they split up when I was younger, bro. So, you know, I grew up mainly with my mom. So okay. I, I'm uh, more Mexican cultured, you know what I mean? Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, where's your mom from? Uh, Jalisco. Oh, know? shit. Yeah. Okay, okay. That's close to where my dad's from. My dad's from Nayadi. Okay, my mom's from Zacatecas. Yeah. Uh, talk about, like, uh, the beginning. Um, when did you know and how did you start your brand? Right. Um, man, I was actually working security, bro, when I was, like, 20, 21, you know, trying to figure it out. I was working at a warehouse shoe store okay. of all places, you know, where I found my inspiration. I got I got costume shoes there one time, but anyways, it's for a different day. Hey, Keep going. <laughs> no, <I'm laughs> that was me. <laughs> hey, sh- I would have let you go, bro. Nah. <laughs> nah, but yeah, bro, you know, I was just trying to figure it out in life, you know. You know, I was tired of the life I was living before, so I was trying to do something positive, man, you know. Right. I didn't finish school, so, you know, it kind of plays with you, bro, being a young man, you know, trying to figure out, like, what you're trying to do in life. You know, and uh, the idea came because it was summertime and it was back to school season. So I was seeing the prices on the backpacks that parents are trying to buy. They're pretty expensive, like 80 bucks for a backpack, like the cool ones, you know, and there's kids that like them, but they're like, the parents weren't going to get it. You know how it is, you know? I used to see the dad like, ah, esa no está muy caro, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I understand that feeling. So I'm like, damn, like, what if I did something about it? And then uh, I had a friend that had a clothing brand. You know, so I'm like, damn, imagine I had my own clothing brand, you know, Mm -hmm. I could probably do something with this. So I thought about selling a shirt and then giving a backpack away for every shirt I sell. Damn, that's dope. So I'm like, bro, I'm going to run with a good idea, you know. So that was actually what inspired me, bro. You know, the message behind my fashion, you know, what pushed me, bro, you know. And talk a little bit about which is awesome. That's dope that you do that. That's, fucking, yeah. that's a good ass fucking idea. I might want to even do that. Right. Yeah. You know? Um, but um talk about like the difference between like having an idea and making it come 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 this far where you're at right now. Like what kind of like thing is like not giving up? Like what kind of things sure. do you do to stay focused? Yeah, man. Just uh you really well, it starts in the beginning, really, you know, like figuring out yourself and uh you're you gotta have a strong why you know my strong why was those backpacks i was really passionate about giving those backpacks away in the city of southgate and the crazy part was uh i ended up getting a meeting with the mayor from the city oh shit i was only 21 man all i had was a piece of paper and you know you might know him or not bro you know <laughs> is it gil <laughs> it was Gil. Yeah, shout out gil what up gil <laughs> yeah so at the time bro you know he's like uh yeah. Well, this this ain't, this this is nothing, you know. Like you don't have a legit business. I was just a kid with a dream, bro. You know, I don't I didn't know nothing about a five hundred one c three or like nonprofits or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I didn't even have an official LLC or nothing, bro. Just a kid with a dream, twenty one, trying to make a change in the city. So uh, he kind of denied me, bro. And I could have gave up there, but I had good support from the moms in the city. You know, my friends in the city. They're like, man, like that's messed up, like. You should do something. I'm like, yeah, what if I go speak in City Hall and speak why this event matters, you know? So I had the courage, bro, to go to City Hall on Tuesday and their meeting and stuff, and uh, I spoke up why this event mattered. And, um, you know, I had courage at the time, and that always inspires me because it's when I feel like giving up, I always think about those times. Like, yeah. if you would have never spoke up, this would have never happened. So it's like... So you got in front of the city council. Yeah, and I told him, you know, we got to have this event because nobody does this in our city and there's nobody doing anything positive, you know, and, like, I want to give back to my city, bro. That's before I had any money, any 
success, uh, you know, with what I have today, you know. I had nothing, bro, just a dollar and a dream type thing, you know what I mean? So then what happened? So what happened, bro, uh, city council gave me the okay. They supported my idea, and they let me do the event for free, bro, in 2014. Where, where was the event at? Right here at Southgate Park. Okay. You know? Yeah, it was pretty big. We gave out about 300 backpacks. Shit. We promoted it through Facebook, all the parents, everybody was just uh, promoting it, bro. I didn't know what to expect when I got there. A long line of pure moms, bro. I'm like, <laughs> shout out to the soft game moms. Like, yes, sir. I did it, bro. I did it, man. I did yeah, it. Man. You know, a K10 experience, bro. You know, and the mayor came out, Miss Davila, and everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, so they showed love, bro. And at the end of that event, YG's people came through, bro, and they invited me to a uh, to their event, which was the next week to give out backpacks. They donated backpacks to my uh, organization, you know? And that's where I met YG and Nipsey, bro. Oh shit, you the actually week, met YG and Nipsey, though. Yeah, the week following, because of my event. I didn't even reach out, bro. I don't know how they found me to this day, you know? Wow. But we're go it, nobody was doing that, bro. Nobody was giving out backpacks. And we're from, like, near Compton, you know? Like, we actually had people from Compton come to our event, you know, like. Yeah, because Southgate is, is known for, like, having people come in from everywhere. Right, right? Linwood, you know what I mean? Yeah, Bell, HP. Not Downey. <laughs> Downey don't come over They're here, dog. too cool, bro. Yeah, <laughs> Downey, Downey got a, you know. They've got their own Shout thing. out to Downey, dog. You know, we go to Downey for, word, for word. different well, things. Well, Downey's the rich side, dog. Yeah, they got a little <laughs> yeah. more brethren. Little us, spoiled you know? boys over there, dog. <laughs> yeah. Acting like the crazy, huh? Right. That's, that's another, that's another right, topic, right, another right, day. Right. Uh, shout talk out about, to Downey. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Downey. Love y'all. We just clowning, dog. Y'all brother, too. Yes, sir. You're a big, rich brother, you know? Nah, not big, just. Same age. Uh, <laughs> talk about uh, meeting YG and Nipsey. How was that? Yeah, bro. Uh, it was really inspirational. You know, that that's really where <clears throat> I found more inspiration because, you know, when I did that successful event for myself, I felt like this is for me. I think I found my purpose. But when I met Nipsey and YG, I, you know, I have heard about them. I was a fan of YG, but then I tuned into what Nipsey was doing. I'm like, dang, like. I'm glad I, I met him that day because after that, bro, I was just following him like a student. I was paying attention to his work, and I'm like, kind of like what this dude's doing. Like, we're both giving back in the same location, you know? Like, yeah. you know, I would hear things about Nipsey, like a crip and all that, but I wasn't really tuned into the music like that at the time, bro. But once I heard about him and I started seeing his moves, I'm like, that's somebody to look up to, you know what I mean? Like, study, you know? I said that recently on, uh, I, I knew somebody that, um, my former co-host, he performed at one of Nipsey's show. Right. Like, you sell tickets, you get to perform. For sure. And I said, like, you know, because they went to the funeral, and I'm like, well, honestly, dog, I wasn't the biggest fan of the music, but I loved the interviews. Like, I was right. a student of the interviews, because back then when I was watching them, I was starting my own, I had a record label and doing music and okay. stuff like that. So he was talking about being independent and being right. in business and right. starting clothing brands and stuff like that. And I'm like, dude, I love this was interviews. Right. The music to me wasn't my favorite. And he goes, who says that? Who says that, yeah. that, that his music's not that good? And who listens, who watches interviews? Well, obviously people who are into business, dog. Yeah, no doubt. Because he had a fiat. He was like <clears throat> 100 years ahead of, ahead when it came to business from, you know, from being, being from this area in L.A. No doubt, man. You know, and that really sparked a lot of interest because it's like, damn, somebody's speaking about independency. And that's how I felt, bro. Especially when he said, fuck the middleman, I really tapped into that, bro. And yeah. uh, that's what helped me elevate my business to another level. Because when I started my T-shirts, I got my T-shirts printed in downtown L.A. And uh, they're making them for me. And sometimes they'll come out a little messed up or whatever. And I'll be like, man, what if I do this? You know, what if I do these shirts myself? Like, it's better me messing up than paying for somebody to mess up my shirts. Yeah. So I invested in my machinery, you know. That's dope. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I also saw on this, uh, I was watching this other, I watched a bunch of interviews. Honestly, for like maybe the last five, four or five years, I'm not even listening to that much music no more. It's more mostly interviews. Right. Someone said like, what can Bill Gates do for me right now? He's so far ahead of me. For sure. So rich that there's nothing really that he can like, we can't really relate on nothing. But having someone who's kind of close on your level, maybe right. a couple steps, five or six steps above you can definitely give you some insight on what's next for you and stuff like that. All right, right. Are you also the type to kind of reach down for the people coming behind you, the younger younger generation that's like starting their brands and stuff like that? Are you like open to that? Yeah, no, nah, I love that, bro. You know, um, there's enough room for everybody. You know what I mean? And uh, I like to see young creators, you know, starting their thing, you know, kind of reminds me of me. Just not clothing brands, but also like other entrepreneurs, you know, like I have a good friend. His name's Tron. He sells uh, CMOS drinks, you know? Okay. And Hustler, bro, you know, he's everywhere just with his little cart selling drinks. You know, that's how I met him. And uh, 
kind of reminded me of me, you know, he's like 23, 24 or something, you know. Mm -hmm. But when I see these young kids hustle a real business, you know, I get inspired by that, you know, because it's like you see that a lot more often now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Without having a college education, you know. Yeah, it's more acceptable. Before it was either you, if you don't go to college, like they're look, look down. Right, on you. right. It's getting less and less like that. Um, I've also noticed because, um, you know, I, I make a little bit of merch for the podcast here and sure. there, right? So I try to re research and do stuff. And there's always like, you always find these people on YouTube or Instagram, like, buy my course. I'll teach you how to make right. shirts. I'll teach you how to make a brand and right. do this and do that. But a lot of times, those fools are just trying to get your money. Right. And they're not really teaching you shit. Like, what are some of the things that young creators who are looking to make that first step should stay away from and what to focus on? Hmm. Now, that's a good question, man. You know, I would say, uh, because sometimes, it's not really a scam because they're kind of teaching you certain things that you should avoid, you know, like, uh, like spending, w knowing where to spend your money. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like where are you going to invest your money? Like, you know, you said you make merch. So it's like, what type of merch are you try trying to do? You know, like, are you trying to do high quality and merch or like a quick, you know, quick flip, quick flip or like know where you're putting your money and know what you want to do. You know, as a young creator, like, don't be in no rush, you know what I mean? Just because yeah. it's trendy right now, like, don't be in a rush. Study the game, you know? Yeah, I have I have a big problem with that, dog. I yeah. have no patience. I exactly. Have, like, <laughs> I have no patience. and like, you know what? I got to have something up on the store. <clears throat> nah, Boom, for and sure. Drop I feel it. that. And then, like, I'll order it. It'll come in, and I'll look at it. And I'm like, oh, I could have fixed this little. But yeah, man, I, don't, I already have a lot of patience to, like, hours and hours of, like, designing something crazy. Or, like, I, I honestly, dog... Um, I don't steal, I borrow, dog. I see someone doing some dope shit, I'm like, all right, I could right. probably switch it up a little bit, make it my own way and shit, because I actually want to ask you about that. When is it stealing and when is it inspiration? Right. What's the difference, dog? Man. For someone who comes from that actual business, you know? Right, right. Nah, for sure, I see it all the time, bro. I see it all the time. And uh, I don't know, man. You know, like, I think it's stealing when you don't really give it the right props, you know what I mean? Like, the right... Like, I don't know, man, when you do something like corny, you know what I mean? When it's corny, I think that's stealing, bro. Like, yeah. you know, you just got, if you're going to, like, you know, I see that Dodgers, but that's cool, bro, because that's home, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, It makes sense. It's paying homage. No, nah, no doubt, you know, and there's ways of doing it wrong, like these brands that be doing, like, the Balenciaga shit, you know, to do controversy, or let's say somebody dies and, uh, now you're making merch, at, like Kobe, you know, for instance. Kobe now you're doing shit. Kobe merch because it's going to sell. I think that's corny, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I think so, too. I think if you uh, if you straight up just jack it, that's wrong. But if you, like, mix it up, give it a little bit of, like, new life to it, if you breathe new life into it, right. then it's, like, paying homage, you know? Nah, no doubt. Or you could go the business way and go get uh, licensing rights to that design, you know, and do it the right way. <laughs> just, you know, but that costs everybody. money. Yeah, exactly. Every man. time you sue somebody, you got to get a lawyer. I know, right? It's hard. Like, they just did that to Supreme. They waited till Supreme was, like, worth a billion, and then fucking, uh, they came then after they went them, after huh? them, you know? Yeah. Nah, that's a tough thing Was it Supreme or was it a uh, Bape? It was vape. No, they think, uh, the vapes, the vape shoes. Oh, oh yeah, the Nike, Air Force. Yeah, Nike, yeah, Nike went, after, went after everybody, man. Yeah, that's that's the thing too with designing, bro. I try to stay as as original as possible. You know what I mean? Because I feel like one world piece is my own world. I don't like to involve like the outside world into the one world piece universe. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, Speaking of a uh, one world, uh, what are some of the artists that tapped in or you worked with before? Yeah, man. Uh, I've worked with a lot of artists. You know, I'm from Los Angeles, so. We have the access to a, to Hollywood, you know, the entertainment district. So, you know, I've worked with uh, <clears throat> hip-hop artists. Like, the first artist that ever gave me a shout was T-Fly. I don't know if you heard of T-Fly. No, I haven't. Yeah, he's some artist that uh, worked with YG and stuff. You know, and from him, just getting connected with other artists. Like, you heard of Draco, the yeah. ruler? Yeah, yeah, Draco, the ruler. Reaching out through, to him through Instagram, you know. Um, he tapped into a post I... I commented on one of his posts telling him, hey, man, tap into my clothes. And a month later, he hits me up. A month later, you know what I mean? So have patience, you know? <laughs> yeah, he hits me up. He like, patience is important, dog. He's like, damn, bro, my bad. I'm getting back to you late, but this piece is hard, man. Like, mess with me. So, you know, he, we tapped in, bro. He invited me to his house and uh, showed him my clothes. Yeah, and, went to his house? Yeah, bro. Well, his apartment in Naomi where they filmed all the videos and stuff, you know? Oh, shit. It was cool, bro. Were you already tapped in, like, as a fan of his music? Or you yeah, just I was this? a fan of his music, you know? Okay, so okay. I reached out to artists I liked, you know, and Draco was somebody at the time that I liked before. What year was this? 
2016, 17. Damn. Yeah, so early Draco, you know. That was before he got locked up. Right. The crazy part, bro, you know. Uh, so I gave him the clothing, and um, he's chilling, bro. He comes out with a Draco, a big old gun, you know, and we're right there hanging out. Damn. And we took pictures, bro, and it's crazy because they tell us the next day, like, everybody that was in the picture, they said, take it down, take it down, take it down. So we all took it down our Instagram, and uh, a week later, he ends up getting busted, bro. Oh, and low key, I think, because of that picture, you know? I think so. Because if you see that picture, he has a big old Draco gun, you know? And they told us to take it down for a reason, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? There was a, the whole Stink team and everybody in that picture. So I'm sure there, that was a pretty bad picture to post, you know? <laughs> Red flag, dog. Red yeah, flag. no doubt. But, you know, Draco <laughs> didn't care, bro. He was just having fun. Yeah. And uh, later on, like a week later, you see him with the with my with my shirt that I gave him in this video. Oh, I didn't even ask him, bro. What video was it? A video called "Having Fun." Okay, it's like a blue camel fit with the big old one world peace logo right in the front. I'm like, what? how did that feel? Man, it felt amazing, bro. That shit got over a million views. I'm Damn, like, Whoa, are you serious? Yeah. Did that like create like a spike in sales? Uh, yeah, somewhat. You know, I used it towards my advantage for marketing. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, you repurposed it for like right Instagram. Now, yeah, and he 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 let me rock with it. He like, yeah, it's cool, bro. You know, so that's dope of him. He didn't bro. even block the logo. You know, sometimes you could block the logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, he had it through the whole video, man. So that was love, bro. You know, like that was pretty tight. That's you know? crazy, dude. Like, uh, that's always a dream for someone who's like uh, up and coming or whatever sure. to have someone like maybe one of your idols like fuck with you, dog. Yeah, somebody certified. You know, and uh. I know Draco and One World Peace don't really match, but at the end of the day, like, he rocked with the style and the fashion, you know, and sometimes that's all you need, bro, you know, is your creativity, you know? Yeah, yeah, and then one can, like, learn from another, you know? We never yeah. know what's going to happen. Uh, anybody else that you work with? Yeah, uh, you know, like I said, we worked with uh, Nipsey Hussle with his uh, foundation, you know okay. what I mean? Yeah. That's dope. And uh, 400 Ways, which is YG's foundation, too, so we worked with them. I came out in the fuck Donald Trump video. Oh you know, shit, are yeah. you are you serious? Dog? Yeah, so I'm in that video too, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna look for you, dog. Yeah, spot me, bro, you know. <laughs> yeah. Who That's else hard. did we work with? You know, That's we work hard. with a lot of comics too, you know, we're in the comedy okay. comedy scene now. You yeah, know? talk about that. Talk about you're telling me a little bit about uh, the comedy store and things like that. Like how did you get involved and what do you do there? Right, bro. Yeah. So the comedy store, if anybody don't know, it's probably the best uh comedy club in the world, no lie, bro. It's the most famous one, dog, yeah, for sure. Best, bro. The best, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nah, for real. Every night, killer lineups, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're never gonna see anything like that. The way I started there is because I, I started off working there, I, I ended up getting a job there. Oh, shit, as a security what? guard, you know, door guy, Hell yeah. not a door guy, but a security, yeah, because the comedy to get onto the stage, you have to work at the door or something like yeah, that. Right? I don't yeah. know, you I've heard about a, it, yeah, you have to be a door guy, you know, and which I is not, which is not security, it's not, bro. They'll kill me if I said, Yeah, I was a door guy, nah, <laughs> man. <laughs> Two you, different you gotta things. be privileged to be a door guy you know you yeah, gotta yeah. be funny you gotta be good yeah but shout out to all my people out there but yeah uh so i got the job there bro and um humbly you know i was just working and stuff and um i was just peeping the game at the time it was like 2018 19 when the comedy store was at its height they had joe rogan there joey diaz uh, tom segura bobby lee all the big comics bro dave Chappelle pulling up you know, so I was just peeping games, seeing how they move, bro. You know, I was able to, like, be this close with Joe Rogan, shake his hand. Same. But I was just humble, bro, you know, like, just learning, observing how they move, how they walk, how they talk, yeah, how they yeah. talk, how they think. I'm like, I'm just observing game. While I'm being inspired from there, I would go home, bro, and just work on my sewing machine, listen to Joe Rogan podcast, you know, Hell his yeah. inspirational shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be like, wow, like, I'm really close to this shit, you know? So, yeah, because sometimes you want to like, there's like, they always say seven degrees of separation. Like there's only seven people in between you and a super fucking famous person or someone you want to meet. Right. And you're like zero degrees separation. You're like right, right. there on your face soaking exactly, the game. Exactly, bro. And I'm just a security guard. Like I don't even Fly tell on the them, wall. Yeah, I don't even tell them my design or nothing, bro. I'm just learning, you know, going back home, perfecting my craft. But, uh. You know, um, there's a time where I wanted to give him a jacket, but I'm like, nah. Oh, you got you know? shy a little bit? Yeah, I got shy. You know, at the end of the day, it is what it is, you know. But Did you end up giving somebody something? Yeah, some comics, you know. I ended up, like, they ended up finding out that I designed because it was a pandemic and there's face masks. Yeah. So I ended up making a comedy store face mask, and they're okay. like, oh, you do clothes? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, what? We never knew. So then uh, Chevy Chase's daughter works there, too. I ended up giving her a mask, and she told me, Oh, I'm gonna go tell uh, our merch girl that you make merch. So they can mess with you. 
So they ended up tapping in with me, bro, and that's how I got the contract with the comedy store, you know, and I started making clothes for them. So I made the merch for the comedy store, which was pretty dope, you know? That's dope, dog. Yeah. What, was, what kind of face mask was it? Was it was it a crazy it, one? No, nah, it was just the glow-in-the-dark face mask that said, said the comedy store. So mm -hmm. it was pretty sick because it glowed in the dark. And if you ever go to the store, it's dark inside. So that mask shined, you know. You know what? I'm a big fan of comedy, dog. All the people you name, I'm a big fan of all of those guys. Yeah. Because uh, they all have podcasts now, Seth Dave Chappelle. And right, you know, right. I'm, I'm into podcasts and stuff, especially Joe Rogan. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about the inside of the comments or just like different rooms and stuff, right? I've never yeah, been yeah, there. yeah. It's three rooms, man. You got the main room, the original room, and the belly room. All rooms are different. You know, the main rooms are like the main attraction. The biggest star goes The biggest, to go. yeah. I mean, there's stars everywhere, bro. But the main room is where, you know, it's like bigger, you know, more commercial. The original room is a smaller room where everything started, where Richard Pryor would go upstage, you know? Oh, shit. So, like, you really got to come with jokes because you're more intimate, you know? Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you have the belly room where Dave Chappelle did a special, and that room is more intimate, you know? It's more of like a practice room, too, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. For comics to do their, their thing, you know? And then when you say you have the contract, does that mean like they design it and you press out the this, this stuff or you also design with them? Um, Somewhat. I design a little bit. I try to put my input, you know, because they're kind of strict with what they want to put out. They're, they're not just, really hip hop, are they? Nah, they're not, not at all, bro. So <laughs> Talk about that because your, your brand is more mostly hip hop and they're not. So how is it working with a brand that's not hip hop? Um, I'm open to everything, bro. One okay. world peace, man. You know, <laughs> everybody, bro. We, we open to everything. You know, we just did their... Uh, LGBTQ t-shirts, those were their first ones, bro. And I ended up designing it. Fuck it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, So, you know, that was dope, you know, because we changed the color of their typical colors, you know? Yeah, their brand. So I thought that was pretty dope. You know, I was able to do their 50th year anniversary shirt, too. So I thought that was pretty sick, man. Dope. You know? uh, and working there, I mean, working those projects, you make good connections, too, okay. with a lot of up-and-coming comics, you know? That's dope. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of skipped over it. Like, uh, one world peace. Like, talk about how you got how you came up with that name. What the name means to you? Right. Now I came up with that, bro. You know, f from the story I told you in the beginning, where I, uh, I wanted to give back, so I wanted to uh, start something positive. You know, and uh, I was thinking about what name should I use. So I was thinking world peace is pretty cool. Like worldwide peace was the original name, mm -hmm. and I didn't really like it. So I'm like, let me add a number to it in the front. So I started with the first number, one world peace. I'm like, one world peace. Dang, that's pretty dope. One world yeah, peace. Yeah, yeah. So I like the ring of it and I just went with that, bro, you know. What about like um is there do you do you look down on people who like let's honestly dog, I'm kind of a cheap person sometimes, mm -hmm. especially when I'm running low on money and shit. For sure. So I'll go on like the clearance on fucking Fashion Nova and give me right. a bunch of shirts and shit. Right. How do you feel about cheap fashion and people who right. buy fast it? Fast fashion. Fast fashion. Yeah, I can't I, can't do nothing about it, bro. I consume some of that sometimes. Okay, you know, finally, someone who tells the truth. No, nah, no, nah, for sure. <laughs> keep I mean, it real. I, yeah, I got to keep it real, bro. You can't compete with that. You know what I mean? A $6 shirt, dog. Versus like a $100 shirt because it's my brand, bro. Please, you know? Like, yeah, nah, yeah, yeah. like, you know, you're going to do the obvious thing. You can get the $6 shirt that's good quality, you know? Once you learn more about the business of fashion, you start realizing why it's 6 bucks. Because they're producing like 50,000 of those shirts. You so know? they get them for like a penny or whatever. Whatever the case is, you know, right. compared to someone like me, I have to start off with 40 shirts. Mm -hmm. So I get them for a little bit higher from what they're paying, you know? Exactly. Yeah, so I don't really mind it, you know, but at the end of the day, like, you know, spread your dollar a little bit, man. Go support a friend or something, you know, that's doing their thing. You know? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I had a post today where I put like, uh, they're going to RIP you all over Instagram, their story. And then the next story, be like, oh, look at this sandwich I eat at Subway. Right. You right. know, so like you got to be careful sometimes on Instagram because people only show like the good part of their life. And yeah, shit. no doubt. You never man. know who's going through bullshit. Right. Nah, that's a fact, bro. It's a fact. You know, you just got to stay pushing. You know, yeah. do you uh, as a business, as a businessman, do you have to put down the phone or lock it away because you get distracted? And you're wasting time on like Instagram or any social media while you should be doing work. Right. How do you how do you deal with that? Right. Nah, I'm a phone junkie, man, because I consume a lot of business through my phone. Right. You know, um, I have my time where I do put my phone away. I go put it to charge so I could go to work. You know, mm. <laughs> that gives me a reason to charge my phone. So nah, but I do have my time where it's like just work time. You know what I mean? We got to finish these projects, put the phone away. You know, but it kind of sucks because then you see a lot of messages or clients that are replying back to you 
Right. So yeah, because definitely, you know, like uh, booking, like we booked this through Instagram, nah, for right? Sure, yeah. That's business. But sometimes you're on there, like trying to do business, and then you're like, oh, fuck, let me check out the fucking the, yeah, the feed the real feeds, quick. Right. <laughs> See what's popping. Nah, yeah, nah, nah. You, you got to try to like balance yourself with that, bro, you know, because it could be bad, you know. How important is your Instagram aesthetic for you or your page? How important is that? Um, like how people look at your page. Like, I want my page to look like this. Right. Um, I try to, you know, be a. Uh, be up to date, you know what I mean? But I try not to post a lot, you know, because I feel like that gets boring, you know? Mm. But I feel like social media is important, bro, you know? Definitely, if, especially if you want to put yourself out there because that's how we met, you know? Right. If I never put myself out there, then we'll never meet, you know? And look at the opportunities we get now, you know? Yeah, you never know what can come, right. come from meeting with just one person and shit. Right, no doubt, bro. Thanks. Yeah. So social media matters nowadays, you know? Uh, how big is the company? Where's your store? How, how's the operation? How big? How small? Like, right, right. What's, what's the changes? How, how, how much have you grown? Right. Nah, we've grown a lot from when we started, bro, you know, from just one T-shirt, you know? I've grown a lot because uh, during the pandemic, I think that's when I hit a big boom. I figured it out because... Uh, Everybody was online, so I put a lot of marketing behind what I was doing, and I paid for ads, and I was selling T-shirts, face masks, you know? And that's how I built my clientele through online, you know? Okay. I was selling mystery boxes, and people were just home, so I was just all day on my phone, bro, replying to people, reaching out, replying, reaching out, to the point where my thumbs got were hurting, bro. Damn, that, I was reaching that out to at least, like, 150 people a day on Instagram. Shit. Telling them about my mystery package because I was selling a package, you know. What was in the mystery package? Um, it depends. There's three packages: a thirty dollar, a fifty, and a hundred. Okay. You know, and the hundred, you become a brand rep member. You know, so same day, same thing. How you go door to door? I was doing that through Instagram. Mm -hmm. You know, I was reaching out to people. I'm like, bro, like we're home, like we're in the pandemic, we're stuck. So I was just reaching out to people, and they're buying mystery boxes, bro. You know, I what would, did you learn? What did you learn from that? Like your mark as far as marketing and stuff. Like what works? Um, what, what works, works for you? Um, reaching out to people. You know, like straight up DMs. Yeah, DMs, bro, and uh, marketing, putting money behind a product. You know that you you stand right with. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some people, uh, you know, when you do a sponsored ad or you you pay for ads, people are like, oh, look at this fool, dog. Right. Who's paying for ads, dog? He's right, lame, right. but they don't understand the business. And maybe you could talk a little bit about why high, why it is important to invest in, in ads and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Nah. I mean, it, it's really important to invest in ads, especially when it's a product you stand strong behind. You know, because if you have a product that it's it it, it don't really make sense, bro. You have no uh strategy behind it or. You're just posting to post and pay for that ad. You're not going to see no results. But when you strategically, like, put a product out and you put money behind it, you start seeing numbers and you start seeing what it does. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's next? Like, Or, you know, actually, like, how do you drop? Are you dropping, like, uh, collections every summer, every spring? Like, what goes behind, like, the idea? How far ahead are you thinking when you drop something? Right. Um, Man, I'm pretty far ahead. You know, I have, like, Thousands of designs that I never used or... Thousands of designs. Yeah, like a thousand designs in my phone. I usually create from my phone. You know, I use apps and then I use uh, Photoshop, a little bit of Photoshop. Oh, you know how to Photoshop? Yeah, a little bit. That's just know? hard as hell, though. Is, I try bro. to learn that shit. I, have, I use like maybe Canva, some other little other yeah, websites Canva, and stuff. Yeah, Canva, PixArt, all that cool stuff, you know. You don't, need a, you don't need Photoshop, bro. Just use your phone. The apps work a lot, you know. Yeah, yeah. That I, really I, took me a long way. I really started using... Uh, there's like a website named Kettle. There's fucking... Uh, um, clip art. There's a what's another one that I've used? Photo P. It's like Photo it's P. like a Photoshop but online. It's okay. a, like a dumbed down version of it. Yeah. Uh, you want to drop some game for the people listening out there? What apps you're using? What's a little sauce? Yeah. Uh, Pixar, Canva. You know. Okay. Them two are pretty big. You are know? you using the premium version? Or are you using the free version? Uh, the premium. I pay for it. You know, because yeah. it's worth it, bro. That's it's the next step it. for me too, dog. Like, yeah. damn, am I gonna have to pay for it? Like, and again, have coming to, from the coming from where we come from, sometimes right, you're right. like, no, doubt. no, I got the free no one. No doubt, no doubt. Try to make the best out of it. But when I got my little money, I'm like, fuck it, you know. Now it's time to buy it. Bam. What's the biggest difference going from like basic to premium on these apps? What 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 helps you the most? Like, what makes it easy? What's the worth features, it? bro? The features, you know, the things you could do, like. Uh, yeah, what's probably the most the feature you use the most that now you that you pay for it? Like, right. which one's worth it? Like the different fonts you could use. Oh, okay. You know how you could cut the picture out and make it transparent. Mm -hmm. That helps a lot because when you send it out to printing or whatever, you need a transparent background. So, if for anybody out there that designs, you know how important the transparent image is. You know. Right. 
with printing, you know. You know what I just learned like two weeks ago, dog? Upscaling. Okay. There's a there's a there's a background remover, upscaling, and uh, I don't know what else, but I would design this 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 uh whatever on some website and I'll post it and I'll post it. And I'm like, dude, that doesn't look like it looked like on the website. Yeah. And I'll go back to the website and said, like, oh, if you pay for the premium one, we'll give you the fully HD one. Right. But since you're not paying for it, we're gonna give you that like, this cheap version. This cheap yeah, version. Yeah. So then I will take that to like upscale.com and then upscale it four times, enhance something and download it. And it was all Clean, free. Right. Yeah. But they don't they only let you do like five or six a day. For sure. But then I'll like put it side by side, dog. The corner of edge is fucking right. beautiful, big smooth, yeah, dog. Big difference. And, nah. I, and I'm all like, there's no, there's no like real big brands that are gonna p- post them. And I was doing that, dog. Yeah. There's some fools. That there's there's homies out there. Shout out to you guys. Well, the first people who bought some of my merch that are wearing fucking ugly ass like oh, I had the lid outlet and they, and then the shirt's blue but the background's black in a box. <laughs> like it right, looks right. bad. Dog. You didn't take off the box. <laughs> I didn't, dog. Nah, that's how we all start, bro. Man, I started off with a printer and do the heat transfers. You know, so it would oh, come shit. out with the big ugly box, or I would just paint on the shirt. You know. At the time, I was just trying to be independent, bro, you know, and so I invested in a silk screen machine, you know. Work. Oh, I want to talk about that. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. What were you saying? No, yeah, I just invested in a silk screen machine, you know what I mean? And if, if someone's going to really take it serious, like, what's, like, the little setup? Like, a couple machines, how much are they? To like start? If, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's yeah, important? Yeah, man. Uh, well, I started off with a vinyl cutter and a vinyl, and then I realized, like, nah, I got to take it to the next level, which was a silk screen machine. The key to everything where I found everything, bro, was offer up, man. I tried to get the best deal possible, bro, you know? So people are getting rid of stuff. You want to go pick yeah, it up? Yeah, so I got my first silk screen machine for about, like, 75 bucks, you know? Oh, shit. And I just learned how That's to... That's the one you go, like, you pull Yeah, it. so you pull it down and you put the paint, okay. you know? Those come out really dope, you know? So I learned that. And then I learned how to... Cut and sew, you know. I got a sewing machine, and I Damn. learned how to do that, bro. Another thing over here, like, oh, you're like, what are you a grandma? What are you a girl? Right, cut nah, and sew? bro. Yeah, is that something you had to go through, like mentally? Like, what exactly, am I doing? Exactly, dude. You don't know how that felt, like 2015, 16 <laughs> ish. You know, I'm like, but you know, at the end of the day, bro, when you're really chasing your dreams, you gotta Sac- cut that fear. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Sacrifice. Do whatever. Fuck you what anybody do. thinks. At the end of the day, they're gonna see me, like, really doing it. And look where it took me, man. I went around the world doing this shit, you know. Uh, that's a, I always talk about like people. You could put out the sauce for free, but one percent might start. No, only like, even one percent of that's gonna finish. Like for sure, people don't want to like look dumb or like put in the work what it really takes. And then when you get when you get that happens to me sometimes. I'm sure it happens to you. Like now you're up here, you're doing better, you're consistent. Mm-hmm. But like oh look at this fool. Like it was so easy, huh? Overnight success. Man, like nah, dog. Nah, dude. No sleep. Like hungry, going for it. Right, making that sacrifice, man. You know, it's the things that people don't see, but I feel like if you love what you do, bro, like it don't matter where you're at, you know what or I mean? Or what people say. Or yeah, what people say or what you're doing, you know, as long as you're doing it, you know, and yeah. you gotta cut people like that off, you know. Like yeah. honestly, it's a lonely game, bro. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know how it be. Yeah, you know? entrepreneurship. And then like people feel like oh this would change, like, oh he's not like or, before, like, yeah, dog, we're supposed to. Yeah. You're supposed to change, dog. Yeah, and you're still doing the same shit. <laughs> yeah, you know? and I'm and yeah. they, I'm the one that's lame. You're the one that's lame, for dog. sure. So like, fuck it, we all lame. We'll you know? Move up, dog. Yeah. Like change shit. Um, so you started off like all this in your house in your backyard. Yeah, my garage. You know, I started off in my garage where I lived at the time. You know, right here, not too far from here. You know, what did what did your parents think when you started? Um, well, my mom. Well, I I wasn't living with my mom. You know, I was just living on my own type shit. You oh, know? you were already on your own. Yeah. Yeah, Damn, that's just dope. me and my partner, and you know, and we we're just trying to figure everything out, bro. You know, so I had a a garage where I was fortunately to work out of. You know, so how did how did you? What do you think was the key thing to get you from the garage to your own store? Um, I think it was mainly all the investments I made. You know, eventually I was gonna have to find a spot to work out of a you bigger, know? a bigger place. right? And I can't bring anybody in my house. You know, and I was really young at the time, bro. I wasn't focused like. I didn't know much about business, you know. I was just, I just had a garage and had my friends come through, kick it, do their thing, you know, while I create designs, you know. And it almost, prior to that, it was a party garage. And you guys would get fucked up in there. Yeah, we would just have a good time, (laughs) you know what I mean? And then from there, it started developing when I started pursuing this dream to a warehouse for me to create. And it was crazy. The more machines I got, the less friends started coming, you know? Less space. Yeah, less space. And two, like, I'm taking my craft serious, so it's like... 
Oh, yeah. let's go hang out. Let's go play basketball. Let's go chase girls, whatever the case is. It's like, yeah. I don't really have time for that. Kind of goes back to like how you're saying about the JAA thing. Like, I'm going to take that serious, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this was that for me, you know? Like, man, I got to chase my dream, bro. I only have one life to live, you know? Yeah. And then seeing all those people around me, like Nipsey and stuff, like, I'm like, bro, I got to... I can't be messing around in the streets. You know? you know, a lot of times people, some people will wake up late, like, oh, shit, I'm f like, I, I'm 50, I'm 40. I, I never chased my dream. I never saved money. I just been partying for 20 years. Right. Uh, some people, you know, start in their 20s. Some people finally figure it out in their, in their 30s. What was it that was burning inside you? Like, damn, I don't want to be this. I don't want to be, like, stuck at a job. I don't want to be unhappy. Maybe a, a parent or an uncle or a family right. member. Like, what was really burning for you to be that young to kind of get you, you know, put the battery in your back, right. as they say? Yeah, well, I'm the oldest of four, bro. You know, grew up with a single mom. That was always pretty much my inspiration, you know, to give a better life for my younger brothers and sisters and my mom, you know, because I grew up in a struggle, bro. It was, it was pretty bad. You know, I know everybody struggles, but, you know, like, but one parent, one parent household household is different. Especially, yeah, a mom. You know what I mean. And uh, you know, it was tough, bro. It was really tough. And you know, all those tough times in my life like inspired me, knowing that one day I'm gonna be an adult and I'm gonna have control of my own destiny. And I always knew that, bro. Even though when people used to bully you or try to bring you down, like I always knew I, I had greatness in me. Like anybody, you feel me, like. You just got to know that about yourself and take control. You know what I mean? Yeah, I have the same feeling too. Like, I don't know right. how, I don't know when, but I'm going to figure this out. Nah, and I'm going to be that. big. And like, every time you fail, you're like, damn, what am I doing? But you just got to have that like unwillingness yeah. to like quit. And you know what too, bro? Even if we don't get to superstardom, we tried, bro. Yeah. We die trying. Get rich or die trying, you know? <laughs> facts, yeah. facts. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Uh, you're not living in Saki no more. Nah, How is it, dog? Man. When you move out, because I always say like, I don't know if I could move out of Socket, dog. Damn, I don't know. Me. I don't know. Like I, everything I love in in life right. is here, dog. I feel that, bro. I feel that to the hundred, you know. But at the end of the day, man, like, like when I told you I was around these people, these celebrities, um, in the comedy store and all these door guys, bro, you start realizing like all these guys left their hometown. It's not like downtown's just up the street. I'm still home now. Imagine these dudes that leave from Boston to yeah. go chase their dream here, from Bakersfield, wherever the case is at, you know, Arizona, they're all chasing their dream. So I'm like, you know, I have to make that next step. And downtown LA for me was good because uh, it's the fashion district, you know? So, you know, you just have to take that leap and leave your hometown in a way, you know? I feel like it's always good, you know? Are you uh are you uh buying your garments straight from like the fashion industry in downtown? Are you ever like importing stuff from China or different different places? Right. Like how do you feel or how how does that work? Yeah. So you know I I do a lot of stuff where I go fabric shop and um I put a piece together. You know I used to do that a lot. So they have fabrics over there, and I usually go around the city, take a walk. That's how I get my inspiration. You know, just observing people, seeing what's hot. You know, seeing yeah. the colors people are wearing. And I go check out fabrics, and I pick the ones I feel are dope. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I, I remember, like, driving down there, like, oh, textile, textile. I'm like, what the fuck is textile? Yeah. And I finally find out that it's just, like, Fabric. different types of telas. Yeah. My mom used to work for this company called LEI, which is, like, it used to be a big, they used to be in JCPenney, women's women's jeans, right? Right, right. LEI, and she used to be a sample cutter. So she used to cut with night, with uh, scissors, right. put the sample over the the, the paper plat. It's like Yeah, a, the pattern. Yeah, yeah and yeah. cut it. And now, you know, sometimes I'll be like, I don't want to go to school. I'm sick. All right, you got to come to work. And she'll have a big ass table from like 1 1 1 1. I'll be yeah. in the bottom sleeping on top of a bunch of different rolls huh. and shit. And then I didn't know, like, damn, like, I'm in a fucking big ass warehouse. My mom's Hell over yeah. here doing, she's a sample cutter, the best sample cutter, supposedly. Dope. Dope. And now I look back, I'm like, damn, I could have soaked up game, but I was just a stupid ass looking. Right, right. <laughs> you know, I don't know I what mean, the fuck is going on. Yeah. But I was like, damn, that's crazy. Hey, like, that's to dope, see man. to see where, you know, things have come. Because nowadays they got like machines to do what nah, she does. For sure, yeah. <laughs> crazy, right? And then my dad, my dad sells hats. He's been a, a street vendor for like almost 30 years in, in right. Royal Heights. Hats and gear and jerseys and that's stuff dope. like that. And then I'm like, dude, I'm like, the, I'm in the middle of this fucking culture. My dad's a street vendor. My mom's a fucking right. working with her hands. Like, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. That, that's going to be my biggest thing. And honestly, like both my uh, my brother and sister, right now at this moment, if it was a, like a game of life, who's the best son? Like I'm in last place, dog. Oh, man. But my older sister's like doing badass. She's a teacher. My little brother has a job and the whole family, they're doing badass. Right, and right. like my biggest thing why like I could go get a job and be not competitive with them as far For as sure. being a good son. But I want so much more, and that's why I put in so much work on the YouTube, on the right. Instagram, just because I, I think this could lead to, like, 
at the end of the day, me taking better care of my parents, dog. Yeah, Because no that's doubt. my why. You know, my parents and my son, obviously, because okay. I, I have a 12-year-old for son. Sure, for sure. Taking care of my family. But family, dog, at the end of the day, just family. And I think that's, that's also, like, us. that's a big thing in our culture, in, in you nah, know, Latino no culture. Doubt. No doubt, bro. Family's everything in our culture, you know. It could, it could hold us back or it could elevate us. Yeah, just right. like girls, too, because I used to be with this girl that yeah. I, I swear to God I was so in love with, dog. But she was like, I now that I now that I'm with my girl right now, that's like fucking builds me up and supports me and does all sorts of crazy shit that my old girl didn't would never do for me. Like, right. picking the right partner is also super important. Key, bro. It that's a fact. Hold man. you down that's or a fact, push you bro. forward, dog. You gotta have the right the right people around you. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Nah, but yeah, bro, that's inspiring about your mom. You know what she did with the uh, cutting with. Cutting so, fabric, yeah, yeah, cutting yeah. samples. Jeans, dog. Yeah, because they'll we, put like 20 jeans and shit. Sh- stacked. Thick, right? Yeah. Nah, but when you think about it, like, that's why I, I picked up the sewing machine, bro. Because I was like, who's the person making these? And you go to these warehouses, guess who's making the... Our the, moms. Our moms, our deals, bro. You even oh, see Oh, it those. is a lot of guys. Yeah, right. guys there just sewing guys. with the little headphones, bro, or the little <laughs> Mexican music playing. Yeah, bro. So, you know, that's really what inspired me, seeing these people who actually make clothing, you know, look just like me. But the only difference is that they're not from America, you know. Um, they're never going to get those opportunities to be in the runway shows to be mentioned with Gianni Versace or Yves Saint Laurent because, you know, their big goal was to cross the border and get a job and provide for their family. So it's time for people like me that are born here to take it to new heights, you know? Like, if you think about it, there's no major Latino that's a big designer or head designer of a big fashion company, you know? People say Rick Owens, but... He's not, bro, they, they don't come from around our damn neighborhood, bro. Yeah. And it's time for somebody like me to make a change, you know what I mean? I feel the same exact way. The way you said Rick Owens, I'm not from a neighborhood, dog. Like, people come from out of town in different cities. Right. And they have these big podcasts, and now they're Hollywood. But there's right. no fucking podcast from, like, where I'm fucking from. Exactly. Talking how I am, talking about things that we grew up with. It's really exactly. speaking about the culture. Like, people move from wherever they come from to LA for like two years like oh I live in LA yeah, I'm from my LA. city like now. nah dog yeah. you're not you don't know shit dog and that too man that being from LA bro it gives me a lot of pride being from here because uh you see all these out of towners killing it bro they're yeah, taking in our city dog yeah and but it's our fault too because we don't take advantage of those opportunities we get caught up with the things that happen in South Central Southgate HP whatever you know the same bullshit yeah and uh I think it's time for us to make change in that bro you know you're 100 percent right dog we love to indulge because look we live right by the beach the beautiful sun beautiful women right the cars the culture and sometimes we over me i'm a big one i'm a big one dog i overindulge in the things like beer alcohol like sure. alcohol food women whatever right i was a big overindulger i was a, gl- a gluten you know a person who eats way too much or whatever mm-hmm. like little by little as you get older it's like kind of like less is more you know like right don't like you wake up in the morning, <laughs> I saw this video the other day. Like woke, like like I was like, oh shit! Like you wake up in the morning, you eat. Why? What did you do? You haven't done shit to deserve your first meal. I was like, what the fuck? Damn. Like back in the day when there was like no society, or whatever, you had to wake up and go find something, go For walk sure. somewhere, go, go kill, yeah. go yeah, do something to earn that first meal. Like sometimes right. we wake up and we go to eat and we take a, we drink some coffee and then we feel good. Like, do you really deserve that? Like sometimes mm. you gotta really like struggle and like really like not struggle but like earn your keep and shit you know like for sure really fight for it dog. yeah no doubt man or else you don't get no satisfaction you know yeah because yeah. then because then you get stuck like us we like we were talking shit about people who come in right we're, we're i'm not really talking shit like shout out to you guys for figuring it out but right. sometimes us it's our own fault why right. people from la are not so far ahead yeah nah big facts bro you know i feel like we don't take advantage of the resources we have facts. here you know and uh we get caught up with all the crap that goes around you know and uh that I, I feel like it's a lack of leadership, you know, lack of leadership in our city, bro. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of people are like, you know, what it is, what it is. Even though, like, we're talking shit about it, let's talk about some indulgence. <laughs> indulge, right. Let's indulge in some indulgence. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the things that you like to do for your free time? How do you how do you clear space? How do you clear your mind and shit? Yeah, bro, just uh, hang out with family, you know, hang out with my brother. Um, Take walks. I have okay. dogs, you know, so I'm always walking my dogs. What kind of bro. dogs you got? I got pit bulls, you know. Hell yeah, what yeah. kind? Uh, Staffies. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they're dope, man. Shout out Kobe, Gigi, my dogs. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, I just have a newborn, too. I have a daughter, so, you know, um, that's why I try to... Oh, you have a kid? Yeah, I just have a newborn, bro, you Dang, know. congratulations, Yeah, I appreciate it, man, you know. So I'm trying to figure out the balance in that, you know, and uh, that's pretty cool, too, having a kid, bro, because, you know, like, 
that 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 inspires you on another level, you know, like Fuck. never before because you, before people you could tell feel, you things, but not until sure. you actually have one. Nah, right? no doubt, because now you're like, damn, it really ain't about me. You know how I used to feel like alone, not having a kid. You're like, damn, what I do in my life, but now it's like, but I'm I'm pretty blessed, bro, because I had my kid at a good age. You know where. I'm not struggling myself in my life, you know, like I know what I want to do in my life and I'm doing my purpose, you know, and uh, I think about like, dang, I could have my kid back then when I was struggling, it would have been a whole nother mess, you know. I was 20, I was 19, 20 when my son was born, right? Yeah. And let me tell you, dog, um, when I found out that, you know, like my baby mom was pregnant, something happened, dog, in my brain. Like it wasn't the day he was born. It was like the moment I found out he was pregnant, I got the phone call and I was like, all right, I got to stop fucking around. Right. So, went to school. I got. I was fresh out of jail. Went to school. Got a job, and just well, I was working this like dead end job. I used to work at the eye doctor selling glasses, and I reached like the maximum like twenty five dollars pay like in the first four or five years. You know, I'm like, there's no, there's people that are, are older than me at that job that stay because it's a consistent paycheck to take care of their kids, right. put them through school, and then like there's not really anything. But then I'm like, dude, like I have, I can't, I can't stop. Right. So I did it for twelve years, dog. And recently, like a year ago, like I kind of like, I'm like, you know what? I got I got to make my jump now, dog. Right, no doubt. I bounce. I got my trucker license. That's also not really working out. So I'm kind of like trying to figure out that whole like work and like, spend time with your kid as much as you can. Right. And then do your business, which is this is my right, business, right. right? Yeah. But man, nothing nothing will put the battery in your pack like a, like a kid, dog. Man, no doubt. It changes the man. I think so. Yeah, a real no man. Doubt. Yeah, nah, for sure. Real men that step up, you know, and it's time to change that too man you know we need to step up as men as dads and shit you know be responsible for you know for the next generation i don't know about you but to me like you know having like i said earlier my dad not being from over here like he culturally and like um i don't know we just weren't clicking together like he didn't understand me and i didn't understand him so sometimes i would say shit like man i can't wait to be a dad right. i'm gonna be a, i'm gonna be a better dad huh. i'm gonna treat my son different and i'm gonna be cool with him because right. my dad was like my dad didn't give a fuck about being my friend he just wanted me to like shut the fuck up and listen basically which is sometimes i deserved it and shit right. but like me and my son have like a really good relationship right now like right now we're doing youtube together i'm Sick. I, I do his videos and he has his own youtube channel which is doing great and just seeing him like being like dude we're almost at 200 subscribers and he's all right. like all oh, hyped and shit right right i was like damn this is the shit i was talking about when i was like i can't wait to be a dad and shit like yeah you can't pay for that bro yeah it's nah, a, it's a yeah. fucking great feeling like sometimes i'll do a video and it gets 50 views on youtube yeah. or whatever i'm like fuck that sucks but then my, right. my son's like dude we got 80 views in a Hell day yeah. <laughs> i was like <laughs> yeah different was, perspectives yeah, right it's See, all perspective just, yeah that's what like I say. You gotta do what you love, man. At the end of the day, you know, like, you know, ain't nothing like doing what you love, bro. You know, you're not just doing this because you wanna, like, it's a trend or whatever. You know, yeah, I yeah, could yeah. tell you do this because you love it, bro. Yeah, you know? yeah, I do yeah. love it. I do enjoy it. And also, when I started this shit, I'm like, obviously, I want to be the number one podcast that oh, oh shit it's from the number one podcast in the world oh, where is it from southgate what the fuck where's man, southgate putting on, southgate man. in the map right? to me dog is so important dog. man same way i feel you on that bro <laughs> you know for saying? real oh yeah super that's important. how I, that's how you know i try to rep the city as much as i can you know um you know but at the end of the day too it's a bigger world than southgate but i know yeah. me just putting in my work i'm already repping for the city you know as you saw <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i actually saw you on the food community shout out to the food community yeah what up food community yeah they tapped in a couple times and then they're also starting their own podcast and getting oh, yeah. bigger and shit like yeah, that it takes time see but yeah. how, did, how did that feel dog and how did it like who tapped in the people that forgot about you and like right. what, ex how, what uh, explain to be on that page because uh, even though like sometimes they make fun of different type of people from our for culture sure. it's still one of those platforms that that kind of bigs up up yeah, and coming artists yeah it holds weight bro that 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 channel holds a lot of weight because uh yeah it's a lot of negativity but you know i always felt like man they gotta have some positive news there and uh i got interviewed by channel 34 a spanish univision channel oh, shit. they came to my garage bro to film me because uh i was going to paris france to do a fashion show out there when was this like two years ago oh, two damn. three years ago yeah that's dope dog. yeah so they came to my uh garage you know and that was positive news you know i got global recognition or nation actually nation yeah nation okay. recognition you know that shit aired everywhere and channel 34 you know and all grandma's tvs you know <laughs> yeah nah nah for real my boy told me hey or somebody random actually like yeah i was watching that with my grandma and i saw you come out on tv i'm like oh that's what's yeah. up bro hell yeah that's the best type dog so yeah i guess full community kind of tapped in bro they heard about that they i sent them a little video about what i was doing you know something positive and they're like oh it's dope homie 
And um, I didn't really think nothing of it, bro. And a, like same thing with the Draco thing. Be patient, y'all. You know your work shows. So, you know, a couple months later, they ended up posting it, and I was just at my house, bro, chilling with my daughter, and uh, I just look at my phone like, what the hell? The full community posting me? Damn, uh, that's dope. And first thing I do, look at the comments to see what what, what are people doing. They do got it. a funny picture of me, but I'm like, ah, it's cool, <laughs> dog. It's cool. They be doing yeah, that. That's it all be it happening, is. But, can hey, have it all. Can have it all. Yeah. But anyway, you know, I was looking at the comments and people were rocking with what I was doing, you know. So I'm like, man, that's dope, bro. A lot of people tapped in, too, after that post, you know, yeah. like yourself or other cool people, bro, that own, like, big companies, bro. Like, big oh, really? companies. Like, especially in the Hispanic industry, like Rancho Mille. Oh, shit. Yeah, like... I thought that was dope. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, because to me, a lot of people hate on Jimmy Humilde, but to me, he's an inspiration, dog. Oh, he is, bro. He definitely is. I never met him, you know, but actually, I seen him once driving his Rolls Royce. That shit was inspiring, bro. I seen that fool. I used to work in HP on uh, on Pacific, and I seen that fool in the 64 Blue Lolo <sighs> bouncing that shit. And I was just uh, driving by. I was like, what the fuck? He's really out here, like, like with nobody, like, no security, yeah, dog. Like a regular fool, you know what I mean? And that that's dope. dope because he's... He's he's he he's an expression to dudes like me because he's like us, bro. He was born here too, you yeah, know. Yeah, parents from back parents home. Parents from back home, and look at his success, and look at how old he is, dog. Still living like a like a dope dude. You feel me? And that's how I kind of see myself, and I'm sure you kind of see yourself like that too. Yeah, no know? matter how old I get, I'm still just trying to be swaggy. We're dog. still gonna be dressed like this, bro. Some Jordans. <laughs> I'm gonna be sixty wearing Jordans right, right, and right, shit. Some Nike. Yeah, yeah, my hat to the back. You feel me? And then to me, dog, like you know, I grew up. I'm I'm born 1990, dog. So what? I was like 10 in the year 2000, dog. In the year 2000, 501s were still in, right? Like like filled at the bottom. So yeah. I can't give it up. I can't give up the 501s, and they're comfortable, right? Yeah. But uh, don't get me wrong. Though, you might see me in some fucking not skin tight jeans but right, some right. skinnier jeans newer style or newer shit, style i like yeah. to go back and forth i don't want to be held in a box dog. right no doubt yeah you, you know, gotta I like both sides elevate a little bit you know not too much you know we ain't wearing no crazy shit yeah. little uzi vert shit i ain't gonna dress like know? a girl dog we ain't dressing like little uzi <laughs> I, I think like you know like uh, that's something that i'm not afraid to say it dog like in our culture that's not cool dog to dress like a it woman isn't, like, it's not it's not my dad Straight would fucking up. be just like it's just it's just i have so much respect for my parents right it's well, something for certain in our culture. I mean, if that's you, do it, bro. But at the end of the day, like I'm not painting my nails either. Dog. Yeah, nah, man. At the end of the day, <laughs> like straight up, that's that's gay, bro. At the end yeah. of the day, if you gay, you gay, bro. You do that, like, and I'm not gay, dog. right? Nah, growing up as a man, bro. You know, around our dads or our grandparents, like they taught us how to be men. You feel me? And I feel like that gets lost nowadays. You know, like yeah, what's wrong if you if they, if you know gay people are allowed to be gay, go ahead do your thing. For but sure, let me be a man. If what's I, wrong with me teaching another man how to be a man? Yeah, especially you know? if it's like my own kid. Like I, if I want, I want to be masculine. Like let me be masculine. Dog. Nah, no doubt. And freedom to everybody. You yeah. feel me? Be yourself. But you yeah. know, it is where again political. It always yeah. gets sucked in. But like you know, let everyone do whatever they want. That's my thing. I don't exactly. give a fuck what you do. But you yeah, know, I'm gonna let me do whatever I want. I want to do. Yeah, no me. doubt, man. Same shit. Um, let's talk about like what's next for the brand. I got anything, anything big coming up? Yeah, bro. You know, so right now I'm working on this Los An- Protect Los Angeles collection. Sick. Protect you know? Los Angeles. Yeah, protect I like Los that. Angeles. That's yeah. Hard. So it was inspired mainly by uh, the 2020s. You know, the pandemic and all that riot stuff that was going on. So we made this uh, design I'm rocking right here, like the revolution, you Sick, know. with the ski mask. Yeah, with the ski mask, how you see everybody nowadays, you know. And, like, it's just pretty much a collection inspired by the city, you know. Um, hey, stay tuned uh, for September. We're going to be going to New York. Oh, shit. Yeah, we're going to be working on some cool fabrics that I'm picking, you know, that represent the culture of L.A., and okay. we're taking that to New York City, you know? Let's talk about a little bit more of the L.A. culture. Like, what does L.A. culture mean to you? Because to me, dog, like, L.A., California, like, it's hard for me to separate Mexican culture and L.A. culture. To me, it's the same thing. But maybe for some other people, look at it different. How do you look at L.A. culture? Yeah, man. L.A. culture is like a melting pot, bro. It's a little bit of everything. You know, that's how I feel. But at the end of the day, let's not get it twisted, bro. It, it's uh, West Coast, you know? It's... uh. Chicano shit, you know, uh, gang shit, you know, that's L.A. to me, you know, Mexican shit, you know, uh, graffiti, graffiti, uh, dirty streets, you know, um, <laughs> fucked up situations, the yeah, good and the bad, the good and yeah, the ugly. Yeah, palm trees, Hollywood, Beverly Hills, you know, the beaches, that's L.A. to me, you know, um, and I love it, bro, ain't no place like it in the world, bro, oh, trust me on that, man, like, Facts. I done been to Paris, France, London, 
you know, you see a little bit of inspiration, but like, you know what's funny? When I was in Europe, they knew I was from LA, bro. You could tell. I think like my swag, you know, the way yeah. I talk, walk, they're like, oh, you from LA? Like Tupac, huh? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> You Tupac, huh? Yeah, like, oh, Tupac, Tupac. I'm like, yeah. That's crazy. Talk about, like, your experiences in Europe. How? Why were you over there? You for work or just for, like, uh, Yeah, for vacation? Fashion Week. For Fashion Week. I Damn, a, you really <laughs> out here doing Fashion Week shit, Yeah, dog. bro. I got connected with agencies, you know, and uh, Damn. they needed designers, and, you know, we just worked it out, you know, but they gave me a platform to showcase my clothing, and that always helps, bro, because <clears throat> when I'm showcasing these pieces, uh, it brings a lot of customers, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So that helps me, but... uh. Yeah, Europe's nice, bro. I never thought in my life I would be there, you know? Yeah. I always, I, I always say, like, I, there's no reason for me to go over there. No but. doubt. No doubt, bro. And, and there really isn't for us, you know? <laughs> nah, but nah, it's nice to travel, bro. At yeah. the end of the day, you know, it expands your mind, you know, especially coming from the hood or whatever the case is. Like, you know, I never drove my first car till I was, like, 20, you know? Damn. Yeah, so, like, yeah, bro, it's a, it's a great feeling, you know, especially coming from where we come from, you know? Especially doing what you love and you traveling to go do that, like it's a whole nother level, bro. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the co any culture shocks you got from Europe or like from what they Europe. do there that's weird, that's different. Uh, you didn't like the food or something. Yeah, I mean the food's different. No Mexican food, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no tacos. Over? No, yeah, they actually they have a taco shop in Europe, but I didn't try it. You yeah, know, why, like why? I'm gonna be disappointed, dog. You know, <laughs> I'll just try a crepe. Fuck it, you yeah, know. The, the nah, yeah, the uh, <laughs> that's what I call them the creepies. The creeps. Yeah, I mean they're cool, bro. But yeah, I mean it's different over there. You know, just the languages, the people are different. The way they dress, you know what I mean? It, it's different from back home. You know. How long were you out there for? For like a week. Yeah, fashion yeah, week. Yeah, for for a good week, and yeah, I mean, it's it's different, bro. You know. Do you have a goal to like be a, maybe the head designer, Louis Vuitton, kind of like like a uh, Virgil, or run a fashion week, have your own foot runway shit? Like, what's a big goal for you? Like, what what is something you're looking forward to? Right, man. I mean, I just really want my name to be respected as a designer. You know, like the same reason how I'm inspired by 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 these people who are making the clothing, which is you know people who look like us. I just want my name to be respected with the people like Versace, you know, and not be known as a as a streetwear designer, you know, like that. Mm. That that's kind of been like a challenge in this business, you know, because coming, from, yeah, I do do streetwear, bro, but at the end of the day, I'm elevating my skill to compete with people like Versace and Gucci and all these Lush, high brands, luxury, and luxury brands. But you know what separates my vision from this other person you know well, at the end of the day they steal from our idea as well to say that dog you know and this balenciaga and gucci do shit that looks just like streetwear but they sell it for a thousand dollars and we're selling our shit for like our, you know 40 100. bucks 50 bucks or they also steal from our culture like mm -hmm. the hispanic culture and like what the fuck man why can't i create that you know yeah. but then i go do a luxury piece you guys ain't considering considering it luxury but just because versace's doing it but you know it's levels to it, bro. Yeah, they're, <laughs> In reality, a little, they're a little more foo foo over there. Like, oh, right. you can't sit at our table type shit. Yeah, but you know, at the end of the day, I feel like you could break your way. You know, like it's 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 about meeting the right people and uh, creating hype for yourself. You know, I think so too. Like a lot of people, like say, I don't know how it rolls, but this this is how I think in my head. Somebody owns Gucci, then their kids own it, then their kids own it. Eventually, down the way, it's gonna get watered down. Where like the kids of the kids of the people who originally owned it yeah. are gonna be fucking with like. Us at, at the end eventually. of the day, and eventually we'll, we'll find a back we'll door in. And just like any Mexican dog, once you let a Mexican in, here come a yeah, hundred more. Exactly, my boy. <laughs> That's how it's gonna be. You know, you know we're just trying to find find our niche. You know, right now uh, I feel like it's a great time for Hispanics. You know, for Latinos right now, and I feel like you know we're gonna keep cracking the door till we break in. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. gonna know about one world peace because I'm telling you what we're working on is hot, bro. It's gonna make New York City understand the culture of LA. And the crazy part, bro, I'm going to New York to go fabric shop. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned for October. It's fashion week in L.A. And I'm bringing a I'm going to try to challenge myself and do a New York collection in L.A. Ooh, you know, mix it so, up. You People know, won't expect that. They, they're not. So y'all y'all better stay tuned for this stuff, man, and come support. That's yeah. hard. Uh who are who are some of the people that um that you know like that inspire you like from Southgate? Like, do you know anybody else that's doing fashion or does music from Southgate that's tapped in with you? Uh, <clears throat> clothing wise, uh, n not really, bro. You know, like besides like my homies from high school that wanted to do a brand, you know, that was pretty cool. But 
honestly, bro, I don't think nobody from Southgate's done this shit, bro. So you think you're the best from Southgate when it comes to this no close cap, shit? No cap. No lie, bro. <laughs> no lie, man. I like, like that. That's what you're supposed to say, dog. Nah, too, bro. Like, nobody really taught me this shit, you know? And uh, at the end of the day, like, th there might be brands out there, but I don't know, man. I feel like, like, I don't know. Some people do it for the wrong reason, bro. I think some people started their brand from the city, bro, just to get girls or whatever, you know? Or money. Money, but you never seen them elevate, bro. You know, and that's how I feel like I'm the best out the city in this clothing shit, you know? Yeah. You know, there's somebody else that claims to be from Southgate, but I think it's from Paramount or something, you know? Mm, I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about, dog. Right, but nah, bro, you're not from mm -hmm. here, man. You man, know? Is that yeah. true? Is that really true? Yeah, I heard it in the podcast. You mentioned Southgate. I'm like, what? And I don't know, man. Dudes like whatever, bro. Like, they always see that in the comments sometimes. Like, oh, what about him? I'm like, my mom, like, nah. Because I, I went at it with some of his fans because I commented on one of his collections. I'm like, I ain't rocking with that because it was a Figueroa shirt, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, promoting hookers. And I'm like, that's kind of lame, bro. Yeah. And then his little fans started bombing on my page. I'm like, all right. <laughs> How do you feel like, you know, um, <clears throat> Like, you know, like the Virgin Mary, right? Most most Hispanics are Catholic, right? Sure. How do you feel about, like, making money off shit like that? Like, when it comes to the Dodgers, dog, yeah. I'm a big Dodger fan. I love the Dodgers, but they don't pay me. And right. I've wasted thousands of dollars on beer at Dodgers. No I feel like yeah. I could do that. I don't feel guilty about right, doing right. it. But I think if I would make, like, a lit outlet fucking Virgin Mary shirt, dog, yeah, I feel yeah. a little guilty, dog. How, nah, how do you, you, do you draw a line on certain things as far as culture-wise what you don't want to take advantage of? Right. I mean, it goes back to what we're talking about. You know, it's about doing it right. You know, if you do it right mm -hmm. and your intentions is right behind it, go for it. You know, like, you know, I seen some Jesus stuff that I'm like, why are you putting Jesus in a shirt? You know, and it's really corny, bro. Like, yep. and then they're promoting the devil on it. Like, nah, I have a shirt, too, that I just released, bro, with the Virgin Mary. Oh, you, you know? did. But it says protect Los Angeles. And then the bottom has like a little prayer, you know. OK, that's tasteful. Yeah. And it's been selling pretty well in my shop, you know, so I. And my shop's in L.A., so it's culture, bro. People rock with it because it's a known figure, you know? And I yeah. did it in a positive way, you know, not to disrespect it, you know? That's the biggest thing right yeah, there. Yeah, so it, it goes back to that, bro. It, it, what are your intentions behind it? Yeah, know? I think it's obvious when people just want them, we're trying to make a quick dollar, sure. a quick flip, you know? For sure. And that's just like, you know, that's a no-no. Yeah, it's all about your intention, you know? Facts. Yeah. Like into sports, music. Yeah, bro, I'm a big sports fan. I love the Lakers. The big Lakers you know? fan. Everything LA, man. All the LA. What's teams. your What's your favorite Laker team? Which year? Which year? Uh, Kobe Bryant eras, man. Like 20, 20, 2010, You know, the first one or the back, the second one with, with World Peace. World Peace with Meta World Peace. That was the back to back. Right. When right. Elbowed, we elbowed with James Harden. And I love that, that three. time. Maybe just because I was in high school, bro, and yeah. like I was playing sports, so. I think that was my favorite time. Also Shaq and Kobe, but I was Shaq. a little youngster. I was but, 10, so you must have been like six. So yeah, it's like hard. seven, eight. You know? Because I'm, I'm born in 90, right? So uh, Tupac died in 96, and people Word. are like, oh, you were alive when Tupac. I'm like, bro, I was six. Right, I wasn't really tapped nothing. in. Yeah, <laughs> until later, right? Yeah. yeah. Nah, but yeah, I think that team was dope, bro. Like the Kobe with Ron Artest and Pau Gasol, like dope times, you know? In 2009, when they got they got bomb it was game seven against the celtics and we lost it was like the year or two before that mm -hmm. i was in jail dog and i was in the holding tank getting processed in the la county and i was watching the lakers getting Sick. fucked up fool. like yeah. we're losing by like 40 in the fourth quarter and during the finals yeah so i'm like i'm in jail i'm probably i don't know how Sheesh. long i'm gonna be locked up dog yeah. first time in jail was the county jail it was the worst experience ever Man. the lakers are getting their ass kicked against the celtics i'm right, like at that, there's right? no fucking yeah. worst like bottom that i've ever been at dog. Sheesh. that was that bad brought me. you down bro your lakers are getting <laughs> killed yeah press i mean nah but yeah i'm I'm a Laker fan to the end, bro. I love the Lakers, man. Now, once once Kobe left, it was kind of weird, right? It does feel weird. It wasn't really like it's like your big brother moved out the house. You're like, damn, like what? What yeah, am I gonna do weird now? Shit, right? Like I don't know, man. And then we get LeBron, which is how am I gonna feel? What? How, like, the first couple years, like how do we feel about this? Yeah. But then you get us a chip, and they're like, all right, all right, it's cool. We feel the a Mickey bad. Mouse chip. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> People talk shit, but I'll take it, bro. Yeah. We 17, you know. Hey, the the, the Miami Heat made it to this year's final, and they lost too you know like right. no one's calling that a mickey mouse i know right Come basically on, the same team and shit nah but yeah the 
What about Man, football? You got a football, football team? Uh, I used to like the Raiders, bro. I'm a mm-hmm. Raider fan. Shout out yeah. to the Raiders. But it's crazy when they move to Vegas, you know. It just I don't know. I'm so California, so LA, bro. I kind of mess with the Rams and Chargers too, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because I could buy the tickets and go watch them now, that that's a dope feeling, right? Yeah, yeah. Every time, I, every time the Raiders play the Rams, I went to the first game when they played against the Rams in the preseason, and I've been to every game when they play the Chargers during the season. But I'm still a Raider fan, dog. I just feel like the Raider. Fans belong in Vegas, dog. It's our city, dog. It makes sense, bro. Yeah, it makes sense. Crazy but I, I feel it. Yeah. But the reason why I'm a Raider fan, first ever Mexican American quarterback, first ever Mexican American coach, yeah. uh, first uh, Super Bowl to win a Super Bowl in LA. Like they have a lot of like cultural shit that, that I fuck still with. That represents LA, bro. Raiders are LA to the end, bro. Yeah. They down. I'm always no be matter a where they play, dog. Yeah, but. I don't know. I'm t- I'm more. C- I love the city more. You know? As long as you don't say like the Patriots or the Seahawks or some right. random ass like, team, dog, dude. from a different side of the country. Right, Tom Brady lover. Nah. <laughs> oh, I love the fucking. I don't know. Dog. The Cowboys, the Jaguars, dog. I don't know. Like, Cowboy fans are like, what the? F-? You know, I, I, that one. That one. Okay, look. It's when we didn't have a team over in LA. Those fools used to come and I think practice here. Right, right. Or some shit like that. And they were America's team for one point. But like at the end of the day, dog. I don't know how you can't be a Dodger fan, a Raider fan, and a Laker fan, then USC football, uh-huh. UCLA basketball. Dog. Right, right. I don't know how you don't, if you don't really love the city. Right. Like, even sometimes, like, Clipper fans, like, oh, they're from LA too. But, like, yeah, but you're going, you're like trying to be cool saying that you're a Clipper fan. Right. You're just know? trying like, to be different. Yeah. Nah. I'm different, dog. I'm different. Right, I, like, right. I like the Clippers. Yeah, you like, guys nah, never want nothing, man. Get out of here, dog. Or, like, I like soccer too. I like Las Chivas, you know? Okay, like, you're a soccer yeah, fan. Yeah. Uh, you like uh, you really into Mexican soccer? Or you like the European shit? Low key Mexican soccer because my grandpa, you know, it always gives me memories and shit. What was the team? The Chivas? Yeah, Chivas, bro. Oh, Jalisco. Yeah, yeah Jalisco. Yeah. That's what's you up, know what dog. Yeah. You know what I want to talk about, dog? Because I'm a fan. I always love talking about food. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember like going to like quinceañeras and like weddings and like eating birria from a plate? Yeah. Okay. Now they're in tacos, dog. Now, have you ever ate one? Yeah. But like recently, isn't that something new, dog? Wasn't it? It was never like that before, right? Quesadilla? Like a taco, a red taco, like Teddy's red tacos right, right, or a right. quesadilla. Before, anytime you ate birria, was with rice and beans on a plate. Right, no doubt, yeah. That's something and new. And a little fucking plate with now, beans. Don't, yeah. don't get me wrong, dog. That shit's fire as fuck. Those Man, tacos the best are shit so ever, good, bro. Dog. Where's you, where do you go for those, ton- those kind of tacos? Dang. Uh, a lunch truck. Now I'm playing. Uh, what spot is it? Man, kind of anywhere, bro, really. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, anywhere they're in almost city. anybody can do it. Yeah, low key, anybody kind of does it now, and it's good, bro, you know? Yeah, well, Teddy's Red Taco did start on Slauson and I don't know what street on a, on, a, on a food truck. Yeah, oh, for real? Yeah, they were in a food truck. And that food, I think that was the best recipe. That food is down. The, the shop I own now, it used to be a birria spot, bro. Really? Yeah, birria on Broadway. Oh, shit. Yeah, they're pretty good, man. They're pretty good. That's but what's now, up. now we make clothes there. It's <laughs> <laughs> a trip. <laughs> Yeah. Um. What about like a uh, low key food spots? Before we were we're almost done here, but low key food spots where you got to go eat. Shoot, man. Lately, I've been trying this vegan stuff. You know, uh, Monty's Burgers. Okay. It's pretty fire, bro. Um, yeah. Was that Melrose? Nah, it's on the uh, Sunset. Sunset. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the fries there are fire. You trying you to know? go vegan or what? Uh, I just like to try everything, bro. Okay. You know? I was yeah. vegan for a year. Oh, for real? A whole year, dog. Man, no no tough, cheese, huh? no nothing. That's the tough part, the cheese and the eggs. I can't do that, bro. No cheese. Yeah. They make vegan cheese, but it's not the same. It ain't, bro. It really ain't. I used to go to like Blaze Pizza and get a vegan cheese pizza, and I was like, damn. like I would just lie to myself. Oh, it's good. It's good. Right, right. It's not good, dog too dry huh it just tastes yeah. different dog. the oily like you make that good. grease dog <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> facts word word now nah, you know what else is fire the domino's pan pizza oh you're a domino's you guy them? you're a domino's guy because there's pizza hut domino's and papa john's word i mean i used to be pizza hut because it's stuff crust but once i tried that uh pan pizza it was like the thicker one yeah it changed my fucking life bro <laughs> yeah you're a big pizza guy that's your thing yeah i love pizza yeah that's what's up, that's what's up. Uh, but there's also a lot of pizza spots over there in like the uh, west side yep in downtown area you've been yeah. to prince street yeah, yeah. What do you think about that? It's cool. Yeah, it's, it's cool. not that great, huh? It's not, bro. It's not the best. Yeah, it's not the yeah. It's hype. I got it when it was kind of cold. I got it when it was kind of hot, and it's like, all right, it doesn't taste that great. Yeah, not the pepperonis just go like this. Oh wow. Yeah, it's nothing fancy. Yeah, like, nothing, nothing. Yeah, nothing that then crazy. I, you heard of Joe's Pizza? I heard of Joe's. It's that one's right. in front of uh, what uh, Rip and Dip, no? Yeah, Rip and yeah. Dip right across the street. Yeah. You know what's dope the other day? Um, we we're driving by Foot Locker, and then um. We pulled over and Rip and Dip was like they had a basketball court. They were giving shit out, and my my son got off and he shot the ball. He didn't make it, but he still got the goodie bag. They gave me an extra one for my girl, 
and they gave me like a bunch of free stuff and i'm like that was a good experience dog. like that should right. make me feel like okay now i fuck with ripping i've never bought shit from yeah. them but i fuck with them now it's a business perspective like what do you have to what do you think about when you want to do something like that right i mean you gotta make sure it makes sense you know and you make the money first before you really give shit away you know um it benefits bro because you know it inspires people in the future and it makes it's it's almost like paying for marketing bro yeah. You know, it's it's free. almost like paying for marketing. Yeah, I wasn't say free promo, but you're giving away for free. No, it's, it's not. Really not because you, you're <laughs> still paying. It's still costing money. Like yeah. the backpacks, you know, uh, I could have saved that money and put it somewhere else or go have fun in Las Vegas or something, you know. <laughs> nah. Facts. But uh, but at the end of the day, like I knew me giving out these backpacks were going to inspire somebody, you know, and it did, bro. When I was seeing the full community comments, there's some kid that wrote. Man, uh, I remember he gave me a beanie and a hat and a backpack. Sick. And those are good memories that people, you know, will forever cherish, bro. And, you know, I'm a positive memory for whoever the heck, whoever got that backpack, whatever, you know. Facts. What so, is, who is, um, my bad, my bad. Yeah. Who is, uh, who is the, who does your brand, who is it for? Like, ages from 24 to 34, right. male, Hispanic, like, who, yeah. who is your target audience? Who usually wears your stuff? Started off, like, in the urban community, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Different type of people, different type of cultures, you know, but I, I realized, like, I got a lot of success in the urban community, you know, Yeah. who support, because uh, I'm inspired by hip-hop, you know, different brands like FUBU, you know, Fat Farm, yeah. you know, so I try to mimic myself off of that and try to be a part of the culture you know yeah give back yeah give back you know like uh the hip-hop culture you know whoever rocks with the hip-hop has mainly been our top audience you know what i mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, and i like the subculture because like being hip-hop has always been like fight against the man fight against the, like rage against the machine not rage against the machine what's the fool's name um uh, that fool with the big ass clock, damn! I'm oh, flavor, 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 yeah, Chuck D, and Chuck D. Yeah. Um, fight the power, dog! Right, right. Fight the power has kind of always been like the the background music of hip hop, which is like we're gonna do what we want, uh, no matter what people say, you know. And I I fuck with it too, dog. But yeah, I mean, uh. Going through your Instagram and looking at your page and shit, dog. I got nothing but respect for you. And I definitely want to let you know that the Lit Outlet supports you, dog. And anything know, you want to do, anytime you have a drop or you want to come on the show and talk about anything, please don't even hesitate to just sure, bro. pull up on that, us man. and we'll share whatever you're, you're rocking with. Um, let the people know where they can find you. And, and uh, yeah, just let the people know where they can find you and shit. Yeah, bro, man. Appreciate the love, bro. Anytime you're in downtown, stop by. Stop by the shop. You know, got we to, got, got you, to. bro. Got you a shirt, man. You guys make 3X or what? Yeah, we got you, bro. We make <laughs> everything. I'll make you a custom a custom fit, bro. I got you, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You then you, can, you, can, you can give me some pointers, you know, on, on how to fucking design yeah, some shit because yeah, my shit's basic, dog. Hey, man, if you want, we could collab, bro. Yeah, that's that's yeah, how I got it, man. For real. I said it here first, bro. You know? <laughs> Look out for the fucking One World Peace and Lit Ali collab, dog. Hey, Hell stay tuned, y'all. But yeah, man, go up. Support the website oneworldpeacecode.com. Uh, we about to do a, a launch for the summer, you know. Stay tuned for that collection. It's a little light, like six pieces, you know, some fun pieces I'm gonna put out there. And then, uh, stay tuned for the fashion show week that we got coming in September. Just tap into my Instagram, Saint underscore Pantaleon. That's my name. And also, too, follow the Instagram for my clothing brand, number one, underscore world peace, you know, for all the latest drops and everything we got coming. I got an idea, dog. Yeah. I think you should challenge any person out there claiming to be the South, the Southgate's number one designer. So before you go out there and conquer the world, even though you kind of already have. For sure. You should go out, look in the camera and challenge anybody out there trying to claim to be the number one designer from Southgate. Go piece for piece. You should go like a new new shit, not shit that's already right, dropped. Right, right. The next three pieces, <laughs> a little challenge, a little competition, man. Yeah, man. Let these people know. Hey, tap in. Anybody from Southgate, man. If you guys claim to be the best designer, let's do a fashion show in the city. Yeah. Let's do a fashion in show in the city dog. in Southgate. Let the people decide who who got the best clothing brand, you know? Hell yeah, let the people decide. Yeah, dude. tap into the outlet, man. Let them know. Let, let, let's say the fashion show. Tap in, man. Yeah, then I will be all over that. We'll host it. We'll run that shit, and then we'll go piece for piece, dog. Yeah, at the end of the day, you know, it's Old all school. about love, you know? At the end of the day, it's all about spreading positivity. We'll get uh, some of these locos to model the brand yeah you know? yeah yeah. and it's kind of like back in the day when you would have like a graph war or, or right, a party right. party crew war like who has the best party who has the best no the graffiti friendly, the same thing. friendly competition but at the end of the day we all learn you know and we all unite and hey never know what comes out of it you know? yeah stay tuned for that that's actually dope if you made it this far in the episode uh drop down uh right southgate 
Um, Southgate is lit in the comments, and we're, I'm actually going to give away some free merch at the end of this episode if yeah. you're tapped in all the way to the bottom. Uh, again, my dog, thank you so much for coming in and pulling appreciate up. Appreciate you. you. Do this shit for Southgate. Let it be known. Thank you for watching. Pull up, turn up, stay lit. Let's get it. Hey, shout out all my people in Southgate, too, man. We're getting it. Let's get it. Hell yeah, just the beginning.